Adobe InDesign's data merge tool can be super helpful to save time and work more efficiently. Welcome to another tutorial. I'm Angelo, and in this video, learn how to import a data source file as we create three digital ads for a fictional coding education platform. In this lesson, we'll also cover how to create a merged document and export the ads in PNG format for final production. So let's jump right into this tutorial and start creating. Let's begin by creating a new document for our digital ad campaign project. I'm gonna click on the new file button, which will launch my new document window. I'll click the web tab, and then we'll add a custom size here. So we want the width to be 200. Hit your tab key a couple times until you get to the height. This is already set at 600, so if it's not for you, go ahead and type in 600. That'll make the orientation portrait, which is what we want. Pages set to one, we'll only need one page for this exercise. Make sure that facing pages is checked off and we want the margins to be 20 all the way around. Of course, you can click your preview box here to see the page set up in real time. That's what it will look like. So once you have that, go ahead and click create. Now, before we jump into InDesign, the whole purpose of this lesson is to show you how to use data merge to import a data source file. I have that in Google Sheets. You can use Microsoft Excel. I'm just gonna jump over to my web browser here and show you the data file that we'll be importing today. As you can see, there's four rows in this. It's very simple. Of course, there will only be three ads in this campaign. You may be working on a project that has 30 or 40. That's what makes this process seamless and much more efficient than creating each ad one by one. So as you can see in my spreadsheet here, I have four headers. One is ad copy one. This will be the main title. So discover a career in coding, launch a mobile app career, become a front end engineer. Then I have ad copy two. This will be the secondary ad copy, learn HTML, JavaScript in less than six months and so on. This is where you will put in all your data. Then of course, you'll need a call to action. So my first will be apply today. The second will be learn more. And the last will be join today. Now here's the cool part. I can also add images into this data source. The header for this has to be at the name of the folder on your computer. So in my case, it's images. The folder on my computer is called images. So if it was perhaps coding to go with the theme of this project, you would put add coding. Next, you would name all three of the images or how many images you may have. In my case, I have three. So the code here is backslash images, the name of the folder slash and the name of the file. So coding underscore one dot PNG. Let me show you here. If I bring over my finder window, have a look. I have coding one, coding two, coding three, and the style, the naming convention matches the style here in my data source, in my spreadsheet. So that's very important. Also, you want to ensure that the name of the folder is in the same subfolder as your InDesign project that you'll be creating. That's also important because InDesign will need to recognize this coding and where to find these images. Next, we can save this. So I'm gonna to go to File, Download, and we wanna save this as a comma separated values or .csv. Go ahead and click that, it will download. Now you wanna drag that file into the same folder as the InDesign document that you will be working on in this lesson. Now, if I jump back to InDesign here, let's go ahead and save this in that folder as well. So save as, and here it is. So I called this Digital Ad Campaign and you can see that the CSV document is there. There's my images folder. And let's call this InDesign document digital ads campaign project. How's that? Perfect. Click save. I'm gonna jump over to my CC libraries here and I have all the assets I'll need to build out these digital ads. I'll have all these assets in a download folder and you can find the link in the description below. So let's start by creating a background to our digital ad. And I like to use the rectangle frame tool. You can use the rectangle tool as well. Either one will work. 
and I'm gonna give it this purple color as a fill. Next, I'll bring in the logo. So I'm just going to drag it over. It's the white version here. This fictional company is called Codely, so I'm just gonna drag out a small version of that logo at the very top of our ad and position it right in the center. Next, I'll click on the Type tool and create a text frame right under the logo. And let's just type in some text here. This is the main headline here. I'm gonna select all, and you could use whatever font you want. The font I'll be using in this lesson is called Canela, and I wanna choose Canela Bold. The font size will be 35, and the letting will also be 35. I'm gonna hold Shift, Command, C to center that. Let's click on our selection tool again and then double click the bottom handle. Now we only want this to be three lines so you can go ahead and delete that bottom line there. This is the main headline. Command A to select all. Go to your swatches panel. Let's make this white. Again, go back to your selection tool and double click that bottom handle. I'm gonna hold my option. This would be Alt on Windows and drag out another copy. And let's just type in, this is the secondary text. Also, I want to make sure that these are not hyphenated. I'm going to do Command A to select all. Go to my Properties panel, and down below, just click on this here, where it says hyphenate. I don't want that to be hyphenated. For this font, I want it to be Gibson. Again, you could choose a font of your choice. Gibson is an Adobe font. I'll link it up in the description below if you want to use it and I wanna choose Gibson Regular. This will be 16 point, and so will the letting, 16 as well. Selection tool, double click the bottom handle to bring it up and snap it right to the text. Good, so I like the spacing there. Next, I'm gonna grab my rectangle frame tool again and draw out a frame at the very bottom, and we want the fill of this color to be this dark blue, so go ahead and click that and I want the height of this to be about 43 pixels. That's good there. And I want this to go right at the very bottom of the digital ad. Let's click on this frame again. Hold Option, Alt on Windows, and drag another copy. Select that text, and let's type in CTA for Call to Action. And select that text, and let's just change the weight from regular to medium. That's all you have to do there. Double click to snap that frame and let's drag it down so it's centered to that frame down below. Looks like we gotta bring it to the front, so Shift Command and then right square bracket. You could also go up to Object Arrange, bring to front. Good, so if I just go into preview mode here, have a look. I have the logo, we have the main headline, the secondary text, and we'll add the image. I'm just gonna bring this, both of these up just a bit. That's good there. Let's bring in the image next. So I'm just gonna click out, press W to put my guides back on. Click on the rectangle frame tool. And for this, let's drag out a frame that goes from edge to edge of the page and the bottom, let's snap that to the top of the shape down below. Let's click on the selection tool, right click, and let's choose fitting on this frame here. Choose frame fitting options. And for this, we want to choose fill frame proportionally. And just to make sure that the image that we're bringing in snaps to the bottom of that frame, let's choose the bottom anchor point here on the align from. So fill frame proportionally and then choose that bottom anchor point here. And then click OK. I'd like to take a brief moment to talk about my e-learning platform over at Montilla Design. Visit montilladesign.com and browse through more than 130 tutorials covering Adobe InDesign, Photoshop, Illustrator, and Animate. You can also find full courses and monthly subscription plans to unlock exclusive content. Now, let's jump back to the tutorial. Before we go any further, let's just create some styles here. I'm gonna double click in the main headline and then go to my properties panel and let's choose New Paragraph Styles. Under the style, text styles here, let's choose New Paragraph Style. Now here, I can name this Main Headline. Good, let's do the same thing for the secondary text. Put your cursor in there, and let's choose New Paragraph Style. Let's call this Add Copy. Good, do the same thing for the Call to Action. 
You don't have to select the text completely. Just put your cursor inside and let's click on new paragraph style and we'll call this CTA text. Great, now that we've done all that work, let's go ahead and select all the text in each of these frames and just delete it. Remember, we're just creating placeholders here with styles already implemented. This will help us when we bring in that data source file. So let's do that next. Click on your selection tool and then just click on the pasteboard. Go up to Window, Utilities, Data Merge. I have already have mine open, so I'm just gonna tear it off here and place it to the side. Now we have to bring in that data file. To do that, click on the Data Merge Options and then choose Select Data Source. Click on this CSV file that we saved from Google Sheets or Windows Excel, and then choose Open. Now have a look, all the headers from my Google Sheets spreadsheet are in the data merge here. So let me click this first frame here, and that will be add copy one. Let's click on the second frame. This will be add copy two. Let's go to the very bottom and click the CTA frame. This will be CTA. And finally, I'm gonna click on the image frame here, and let's click images. You can see a dashed border is now applied to that frame to tell me that that is an image frame now containing of all the images. So now if I click this preview box, have a look. We have our main headline, the secondary text or the ad copy. We have our call to action as well as our main image. Let's click on the next button here in the data merge window. This will go to the next record. Remember we have three ads all together. So I'm gonna click next. There's the second with learn more, call to action, and then we have some different text here. And then I can click on the third record and there's our third image with different text and a different call to action. You could see how this is very useful if you had 10, 20, even 30 ads to build. All you would have to do is populate that data source and then apply it with the data merge. I'm gonna go ahead and add a few more elements to my digital ads here, and then I'll show you how to create a merge document. All right, to create a merge document, pretty simple. Just click this icon here, create merge document. There's another way of getting to it. Click on the data merge options and choose create merge document. Either way works, but obviously clicking one button is the easiest way. This will bring up the create merge document window here. You don't have to worry about any of these. We do want to record all the records to merge. If you wanted to record a single record, obviously you would just click that and then choose which record. And by the way, the record is each instance of the data merge. So we have three here. So if you wanted the second record, you would only type in number two, but we want all records. The other thing I want to do is click on the options tab up here and in the fitting image placement under fitting dropdown, we wanna choose fill frames proportionally. And we also wanna choose center in frame. Now I know we already set some fitting options to the frame prior to doing this, but this will just ensure that those images fit the frame proportionally and fit inside the center of the frame. So do those two things, fill frames proportionally and choose center in frame. Once you've done that, click OK, and that will create the merge document. This will let you know if you have any overset text, in which case you would just have to go back and fix it, but I don't have it, so I'm gonna click OK. Now check this out. I have one document, it's a merge document, and it has all three of those digital ads in it. That's pretty convenient. And all we did was populate a data source using Google Sheets and import the text and all the other data. Now that doesn't mean I can't go in individually and change anything I want. So I'm on the second, I'm gonna go to my CC libraries and I'll make this one blue. I'll go to my third one, go to CC libraries and make this one green. And so now I have three digital ads that are different, the color and the text. And to export these, all I would have to do is go to file, export, Choose the folder that you want to save them to. Choose the format, typically JPEG or PNG. I'll go with PNG and hit save. 
choose the range. I do want all the quality. I'm going to set that to maximum and the resolution 72 with the color space being RGB. Go ahead and click export. And if I bring over my finder window, you could see that they've been exported different colors and different content on each. Thank you so much for watching and following along in this video. Leave a like or comment below if you found this tutorial helpful. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and notification bell to stay up to date with all my latest content. If you'd like to learn more about Adobe InDesign, well, check out this playlist right up here. Until next time, take care and keep creating.